So I started out cutting the block here with my circular saw, but it wouldn't go all the way through. So I finished it off here in the miter box. These two pieces will be the center of the top and bottom of the new furnace. And then I put a bunch of Tex Bond all over the mating faces. You can see the square pieces here in the center. And then I stick them together like this. This is quite a bit bigger than the previous one I built. Well, the, the first one I built. This is slightly smaller than furnace number three, but much larger than my prototype electric furnace uh, several years ago. Now here I'm tracing out where the coils are gonna go. This will be the entrance over here where I'm pointing. Uh, so I'm gonna make a mark about there and then up here in this other spot. This is where I'm gonna drill for the coils to come in through the wall. And then they'll sit in these tracks here. Now here I've gotta have a place for it to turn around and go back the other way. So I only wanna destroy one brick. And so I'm gonna carve a slot right here where I'm shading. And this will help me be able to see what I'm doing later. So then I set my saw to a half inch deep and 15 degrees. That way, as the coils expand, they'll sink further into the slot like I did with my last large one. And I cut on each line, and you can see how easy these things break free. Not a problem at all, just a quick little pry with a screwdriver. And then just clean up the bottom just like so. This stuff is super soft, but you know, it is silica based, so you gotta wear a respirator when you work with it. And like so, two little 15 degree channels. It's pretty slick. And then here I have to carve this one manually for where the coil is going to turn around and head back the other way. And made quick work of that. Now here I'm using this little piece of 3 quarter inch angle iron to actually carve the groove in the lid that's going to support these bricks. And it's going to go in here just like, well, no, not like that. It's going to go just like so. And you can see here I've got the top, which will eventually be the bottom, flush all the way around. And so then I will simply weld these four in a frame here to hold the bricks together, just like so. And you can see them there before I cleaned up the welds. I need to add a little more text bond to all these bricks here later. And now I beat the heck out of this three quarter inch piece to make a little handle. Hold it at a slight angle because I think it'll be a little bit better before I tack weld it on here. There and over here. It doesn't have to be too terribly strong, but strong enough, of course and an axle bolt on each side. Now here, for the lid pieces, I simply bolted them together and I didn't weld it onto the frame because of alignment problems. This way, they're bolted and they just kind of fall where they may and then I weld them there. That way, I don't have to worry about alignment or anything. It's a lot easier that way. And then for the latch, I'm repurposing the old one, but I gotta tap the frame here in the front so that it can attach to that bolt there that's hidden behind the handle. So here's my old latch that's auto latch and then I just bolted in here to that hole I just tapped. And you can see here that when I drop the lid, it'll automatically close and boom, like so. Piece of cake. And so then we move on to the first coil test. And let's cross our fingers and here we go. And look at that. Oh, that's a good color. Okay. So they're not quite sitting where I want them to, so I'll use this piece of metal here carefully to stretch them and tap them into the grooves that I cut. And they're settling quite nicely. They don't look like they're going to fall out at all. This is perfect. Okay, on to the next thing. Well, I need more text bond eventually in here too. Now this is my first box made from an old computer power supply box that went dead. The problem was it tended to overshoot, and so I'll uh, show you what I did to fix that here later. These initial galvanized rods were my power rods for the coils, and I stuck them through those holes I drilled like so. And then um, they didn't work though because the galvanized stuff, you know, it melts, zinc melts at a much lower temperature, and so they corroded and it was awful. So I made these tapered pins out of some stainless steel rod, but it was a little bit too big to actually thread. And so I stuck this file here in my cross slide vise since I don't have a metal uh, cutting lathe, and I essentially turned this down a little bit so that I could then thread the outer side of this shaft because I need to be able to still put those nuts on to attach my terminals. So this is my new power box. It's gonna be mounted remotely like I did on my large furnace uh, last year. This is gonna be packed much tighter though. That's why it's only, it's two by four by six. Much, much smaller. But everything will fit, no problem, because I already tested it. And here it is. The cover is of course not shown, but you can see how tightly it is packed. However, this had a little bit of problem with thermal runaway. Apparently when that um, relay gets hot back there, that tan piece, when it gets hot, it uh, decreases resistance to the point where even if the signal is no longer sent to it, it still sends power to the coils. 
And so this thing was up to 900 degrees without my knowing, uh, even though the power was turned off. And that was a little bit scary. And so I'll show you here what I did to solve that problem. This box here covers the terminals and the thermocouple wire that come out of the furnace. There's a little pin there in the back that allows this whole arm to fold down uh, for storage. And of course there's this little latch here that holds it. This is shown before all the welds and stuff are cleaned up. But you can see there it worked out quite nice and it keeps the controller far away from where the heat is. So here's my heat sink that I'm working on. It's a bunch of one inch by four and a half inch strips that are going to go on the back of my controller box like so. I'm going to have to weld them on, uh, avoiding those two holes for the relay mount. Of course, I think I'm going to go want to go all the way across, but these little clamps weren't big enough, so I'll have to do it in several stages. But I got it here and tack welded it where I wanted it real quick. But then, of course, I had to dismantle it because I can't get my torch down inside those quarter inch gaps. The gaps are quarter inch, the steel's an eighth inch wide, and this works extremely well, as you'll see here in a second. But I slowly then added my wooden spacers, a quarter inch, and then welded very quickly down each one. I would ordinarily never run a single thin straight line weld. I would always move in little circles or arcs. But in this case, I, I had to leave some of the stuff inside the box and I wanted to minimize the heat. So I worked extremely quickly and just ran a quick straight line bead down each of these little fins. Now there's 11 fins you can see here because I thought, well, if there's only 10 and I need that little push over the cliff, well, where could I go from there? Well, nowhere. And so there are 11 fins. And when we add power to it, it works great. And you can see that it never gets hotter. No, it doesn't get too hot that you can't touch it, whereas before it did. I no longer have any thermal runaway on my relay and everything is fantastic now. Still need a little bit more text bond on things. I'll get around to that eventually. But here we go with my first, I gotta get this dross off of here, but I'm gonna go with my first actual pour. Now this crucible is just a steel pipe with some bolts welded on to grip it with, a ring to tip it, and you can see here in a second how bad scaling, there's the scale you can see. So eventually this crucible will, you know, it'll totally disappear as the scales flake off. It gets a little thinner every time you use it. But this first pour went extremely well, and I'm super happy with this new furnace. I think it's gonna last me a long time, and it's significantly bigger than my first one, but not so big as the last one that, you know, it's, I can't store it somewhere. But it worked out really great. And uh, stay tuned to you so you can see what we actually ended up making here with this first pour. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.